Hi, and welcome. Thanks for dropping in. Um, the paranormal. Well, what is the paranormal? The paranormal is a happening which the normal scope of scientific study cannot explain. Or as Shakespeare said, there is more in heaven and earth, Horatio, than you have ever dreamt of in your philosophy. Now you may think it's strange that I, a clergyman, are sitting talking to, hear, to you now about a subject such as the paranormal. But most of the miracles of Jesus were paranormal. Hey, what about the biggest miracle of all, a nerth shattering one, which is the very foundation of Christianity. I mean, the resurrection. Since that amazing happening, Christianity has been talked about, written about, studied by many eminent theologians. And as I speak now, is being picked over by skeptics the worldwide. <laughs> um, let me read to you a small portion of one of the Gospels dealing with the resurrection. I've chosen John chapter 20 verses 11 to 18. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? they asked her. She answered, they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you're looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you have taken him away, sir, please tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father, to my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. Just imagine that scene. It was very early in the morning. Dawn would be just breaking. And the scene that she saw was absolutely bewildering. The huge stone sealing the mouth of the tomb had been rolled away. Big stone. Take more than one man to do that. She looked inside the tomb. It was empty. The fact that Mary said, they have taken away my Lord, indicates that she thought of him as dead. The body she'd come to embalm was missing. Now, with her eyes, no doubt, swollen from much crying, she'd failed to recognise Jesus. It was his voice that gave him away. She tried to grab hold of him, but Jesus told her he had to redirect her devotion because it was pointing the wrong way. 
Christianity is not about going backwards, it's about going forwards into a new relationship with Christ. The resurrection didn't mean that he'd come back to life again, like Lazarus, another paranormal experience. Because if he had done, he would be subjected to dying again at some point. That would be of no help to anyone. No. Um, we know that people do not rise from the dead. We know this. But then, Jesus was no ordinary person. This was resurrection, not resuscitation. Now, I talk about some of my own personal paranormal experiences in my book, From Stage to Pulpit, during my 25 years in show business. And the most startling was when I was a guest at the hotel of the star Jimmy Clitheroe. One winter's evening, everyone in that room Everything that was prophesied about the people there came true. Even a death and almost a murder. As a clergyman, I have had many astounding moments in every parish I've ever served in. I've been summoned at all hours of the day or night by people of all ages, the young and the old, who wanted an explanation to what they had just experienced. Many swore they had just had a visit from a loved one. Uh, none at all were left frightened. On the contrary, they were all delighted and full of smiles by their experience. They felt that there really is more and any, any disbelief at all had been dispelled. Now, here's a young lady called Laura who works as a stylist for a famous London West End store called Harrods. I was going to fall down the stairs, I got up in the middle of the night, got to the top of the stairs and as I was like falling down this like bright white light was above me and I like floated down to the bottom rather than falling and I woke up at the bottom of the stairs the next morning and I think it was an angel. Exorcism, oh yes, the church does offer this service too. I always strongly recommend the diocesan exorcists because they are specially trained to deal with such phenomena. Mostly, um, I find there's usually a logical explanation. However, not always. I have felt drops in temperature from warm to very, very cold, shivery cold. Doors that have banged without any reason or toll. And once in Ashton on the line, after my third visit, um, a dark human shadow went fleeting across the wall. The wife said, you saw that, didn't you? Did you all see that? Her husband said, yeah, I saw it. And I had to admit, I saw it too. I can tell you, on some occasions, the hairs on the back of my neck have stood up on end. Let me introduce you to Jay. Jay lives in Cheshire and works as an area sales manager for one of our larger industrial companies. He, in his own words, is his experience of the paranormal. Went to my bed that night as normal and um, hadn't had any um, cheese or anything like that or anything that could make me react, respond differently physically. So I went to bed and um, I would say about four, 
in the morning, basically in the middle of the night, I just woke up. Well, I didn't. I don't know whether I was awake or asleep, but I woke up to this um, feeling of pressure on my chest, which was more um, like a darkness that was on me, like a figure was there, and I couldn't breathe. Basically, it was like I was paralysed with fear, and um, it, it was just. I've heard people say that they were paralysed with fear, but I've never actually experienced it like that, and. I just couldn't move, basically. So that was that, that was happening, and I was just stuck in one situ um, position. Um, at that point, I saw to the left of me here um, two shapes, like people, come into the room. But when they came to the room, it was like something lifted. The fear had lifted, and um, as they came in, I couldn't see their shape. I just could just see, see these, these two shapes. Whatever was on me, that fear just left, just left almost instantly, and um, and I could breathe and it was that normal. But then they were still there, the two the two shapes that come into the room, and um, I could hear them whispering, sort of like like they were having a conversation about something, just having a quick conversation, and then they just went as quick as they came in, they just went, and then um, I woke up in the morning and I was just. It just obviously the experience of what happened um, stayed with me, and um, I believe without a doubt that that was an angelic experience because the way the fear that was in the room left the room as they entered, it was obviously something um, supernatural. Healing comes under the list of paranormal. Here's my wife Wendy to tell you about her religious healing experience. Another paranormal example following a desperate prayer to Jesus for his help. Uh, my little miracle happened in 1966 when we were in Germany. Laurie was working in Germany. And um, I can't remember how long we'd been there. But one day I woke up with this dreadful headache like migraine. And I, like it just went on for about a week. and. Like you do, you say, please take it away, please take it away. And after about a week, um, I was sitting on the settee and suddenly I, sa I said it again, please take it away. And um, it was like gentle fingers stroked my forehead from left to right and took, took the pain away. It just went. And it, it was amazing, and I'd never had headaches before then, and I never had any headaches afterwards either. So that was my, my little miracle, which was wonderful. Jesus overcame death, the last enemy. It was victory over hatred and trickery and all the human weaknesses that combined to put him to death. It truly was resurrection. The change in his body points forward to the change in our body and our natures, overcoming all that is at enmity with God. Mary could say, I have seen the Lord. This certainly was not wishful thinking or any hallucination. The truth is that Jesus had risen. He had transformed her. He went on to transform the disciples. And hey, he can, he can transform you too. All you have to do is to just think of Jesus as someone who not only lived in Palestine, over 2,000 years ago, but is alive right now and very near. In 1976, I was booked to appear at the Villa Marina on the Isle of Man with star comedian Ken Dodd, lovely man. Now, later that night, in my bedroom in the hotel. When I least expected it, I had a confrontation 
with Jesus himself. I could hear him speaking to me. He ended up by saying, I chose you. You didn't choose me. A cynic, an agnostic, then died to his way of life. Like the disciples, I dropped everything and followed him. He did say, follow me. And I have followed him ever since. I tell you, my friends, never before have I felt such overwhelming peace. Never before have I felt such overwhelming love and strength. Oh, I can place my hand over my heart right now, look you in the eye and say to you, personally guarantee you, oh yes, Jesus lives. Hallelujah. May the road rise up to meet you and the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rains fall soft on your field. And until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. <laughs>